basically the war on drugs was a failure. Most experts today agree that the war on drugs was a failure. It didn't decrease the number of drugs used in many communities, and it actually had some pretty awful consequences. It was a catalyst that produced the carceral state, a term that, in part, describes the billions of dollars the U.S. government filters into the criminal justice system, which disproportionately affects people of color. That money goes to the budgets of police, sheriffs, judges, prosecutors, defense attorneys, and even prison staff. Here are some of the stats of what the war on drugs actually did. One FBI study noted that while Blacks represented only 12% of all illegal drug users, they made up 41% of those arrested on cocaine and heroin charges. Women, disproportionately Black women, are the fastest growing incarcerated population in the United States. Since 1970, America's incarcerated population has increased by 500%, resulting in over 2 million people in jail and prison today. And despite being only 5% of the global population, the U.S. contains roughly 20% of the world's prison population. According to studies, today, Black and white people use and sell illicit drugs at similar rates. But Black people are roughly 2.6 times more likely to get arrested for drug crimes. And I've seen this firsthand. I taught in prisons where young men have been locked up for doing the same things that some of my white college classmates did. The difference is that one group was targeted and another group wasn't. And oftentimes, that's what decides who ends up in a prison and who ends up free. So I'll leave it up to Tracy and Anna to take us into the second hour. Anna, you don't want to go first? Oh, boy. Um, what can I say? I mean, I don't cuss, so that's not an option. In this rare case, I wish I did because it seems appropriate. This is the type of stuff that makes it seem appropriate. I'm not surprised. I'm still mad. And I'm still wondering the same thing I did before. What is it that I can do? There's got to be something that I can do. And I'm not thinking about it. Or I haven't thought about it. I haven't put my mind to it. Because this is ridiculous. I mean, we have the same, we have the prison, we have the preschool to prison pipeline, and nobody seems concerned about it. Nobody seems to be concerned that they're building more and more prisons. They're throwing money. But there are some police forces that have larger police budgets than some small countries. Totally. Are we serious with this? Are we serious with this? We have to recognize and be more, those of us who have podcasts that tend to lean left, have to be more focused on bringing these type of issues up because this is, this is utterly ridiculous. It's, it's, it's like the government is purposely setting up black people to fail. And that's the thought that keeps, I know, Theus, don't give me that look, Theus, don't give me that look, I know. But it's just like, it's so, if it wasn't clear to me before, it's clear to me now. It's like, why is it that you want me as a black woman? Everybody else can succeed, but you focus in on black people. I, that's what, I get it. I don't understand it, and I don't have to like it. And I know that makes no sense to anybody else, but those are all my convoluted thoughts coming together in one train. I've said this uh, to Foxy, and I don't even know what the subject we was on. <clears throat> Black people don't accomplish. They overcome. And it's been like that since the beginning. Whatever time frame you want to use, whatever. Black people don't accomplish things in this country. We overcome things in this country. Problem with that 
and I've I've often said similar. So this isn't, you know, um, it's putting the onus on us. It's not that black people overcome. We're just surviving. Right. White people. Obstruct. Turn it on its head. It's who is taking a direct action. See, if you can look at what is causing the action and remove that player and it no longer occurs, that is the source of your attention. Right? You could take black people and say, okay, what if we uh, decided that we're going to live in our own communities and build our own businesses and only interact with each other? Would that work? History shows you no. Okay, okay. Well, what if black people change how they walk, how they talk? They just try not to cause no trouble. They don't look white people in the eye. They get off the they get off the sidewalk if, if white people come in. We say yes, sir, no, sir, all that stuff. We make sure we always in suits if we can afford to get a suit, even if it's an old tacky suit. We put on a suit. Will that help? History says no. Well, what if we what if we band together and we actually start to assert our rights and, and, and we and we take it to the courts and we take it to the to the, the, the courts of public opinion and we take it to the streets and we protest Would that work? History shows, you no. What if I hold my hands up? What if I lay down? What if I sit down? What if I run? What if I stand still? What if I call for my mama? Would that help? History says no. Who is the aggressor on each of those occasions? I'm tired of people not looking at where the fucking problem is. The problem is the bully. The bully stops being a bully. Then you can look at other variables. Right. Then then you can start saying, well, maybe there is a work ethic issue. Maybe there is a, 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 a laziness issue. Maybe there, there, there's there's something uh, criminalistic. You're, you can start looking at all these other variables. if You stop the main one first. The only thing that's going to address this and it would be disastrous is the one thing that we dare not say. but it's what they want so bad. They large day, not they individual days. They're itching for the fight. Why do you think they have all those guns? Who are they afraid of? Who have they been taught to be afraid of? Why are they so afraid of this 2040 whatever number is? The browning of America. Who taught them to be afraid of that? What is it that they're afraid of? I've heard a few former racists speak. And they tell you where the, where the conversations are. They are deathly afraid that when they're no longer the majority and they no longer have a firm hold on the power, that they will be treated the way that they have treated others. And so out of that fear, they have to keep everybody else suppressed. Even if they don't want to cause you harm, they fear what the consequences could be for their children and their grandchildren. Even though history has shown we do not do that to you. We literally, every time we've had the opportunity to do that, we somebody in our own circle snitched on us <laughs> or we just didn't do it. The safest place for white people to be is around black folk. Most dangerous place for black people to be is around white folk. There's something wrong there. That reminds me of a story and then we're going to go into the second. Unless Anna, you have anything to say?
what I will add to that is just that um, uh, as Tracy was asking, what can we do? And you're right, there are not a whole lot of podcast people or YouTube people who talk about crime continuously. I can give you a name right now. Kim Brown. Burn it down with Kim Brown. She keeps up with these stories all across the U.S. She has people who are on the ground and you can keep yourself informed. And now I know these people that are right here, we're, we're hyper-informed. That is super exhausting. Mm. And I would also say support black businesses. I learned about a, a seed company, Sister Seeds. Sister spelled like S I S T A H. And this woman is trying to bring back. a bit of her culture and has seeds that you don't find anywhere else. And it's a part of the uh, Afro-Caribbean uh, culture of food. Uh, certain foods that are dying out. So, you know, beyond that, Really, I wish everybody would look towards their own community and ask, what can I do right here at home? So that's that's just what I would ask. Thank you. Let me just tell you this story real quick, piggybacking off what Diaz was saying. And I don't know if it's funny or more ironic or anything else there was another um police shooting where i live it was it was years ago but you couldn't tell the difference even if you tried um so it's very vague of what i'm gonna say but the story is uh, there was another police shooting and, it do, and does another protest and it was happening around a certain time downtown and where I was parked, that was a couple of blocks, three or four blocks away from where I was working. And one of the people who worked there with me was Caucasian, was white. And I'm saying it's time to go. So maybe 15 minutes before it's time to go, they came to me and said, uh, are you sure you don't want me to drive you down to the uh, your vehicle? Are you sure you don't want me to, you know, just make sure that you get to it? I'm like, no, I'm I'm fine. I'll be okay. Don't don't worry about it. So five minutes before it's time to go, they come back again. Are you absolutely sure that you don't want me to drive you? Are you sure? Are you go? I, I just want to make sure that you're safe down there. And it was this close. <laughs> it was this close for me telling that person, look, between you and me, I'm the safest person walking the street. They're not after me. I didn't do anything. I'm fine. In other words, I want to make sure that I'm not seen with you. So I would be okay. You need to... Um, leave like now like I know you're big on die to five and you ain't leaving the five you need to go now Mr. Marlon yes even in those moments of unrest mm -hmm. how many white folks actually have been killed or seriously harmed in a black 
protest or riot. I'm not saying nobody gets hurt, but we have been well trained. Don't touch them. So even with us being mad, plus whenever we are having an uprising, they with us. <laughs> so I'm good. Even in those situations, I mean, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But I'm just saying, old boy was still safer than you. Because when the police roll up, they weren't going to think he was, they're going to think you were part of the problem. They're going to think he was part of the problem. That's the other uh, side of it. So I get what you, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not taking away from what you were saying. I'm just saying, old boy probably was still safer than you. I felt good. Heck, I got more high fives going down to the street. But it, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You're correct. Ain't nobody going to touch you. Yeah, I ain't. ain't nobody going to touch you. Because the, the police will try to investigate that one. Whether or not they solve it, that ain't necessarily the same. <laughs> but they will at least try to figure out what happened. And then, whole other thing. Just to draw a real stark contra contrast here. We have had countless people be killed by the police, extrajudicial killing by the police. We have had a lot of things happening just person against person, right? A lot of crimes happen every day that we don't even know much about. What did we just watch wall to wall coverage of? Well, I don't even know how long that was. Was it a week? Something like that? Got Netflix specials, Hulu specials, and wall-to-wall -wall coverage about some rich white guy who murdered his family. Oh, uh, okay. You're right. I didn't even watch that. You don't that get that before. coverage for police officers who killed somebody. You don't get that coverage for... Uh, the last time we had coverage anywhere near that was Ahmaud Arbery when he was lynched. Yeah. We don't live in the same country, man. We <laughs> All right. Well, sorry, but I know we need to move into happier moments now. Yeah, we do. Yeah, did anybody have an answer to Parker's question? Um, I, I couldn't see it, so I don't know. What was the the um the president? Which president? He found that he found the answer. He found it. Yeah, he found his own answer to his uh, own question. Do, 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 I think do, do, do. he said was Hayes was the president that was the No, no. I thought he asked our opinion. Oh, which one which, which one was worse? Nixon oh. Reagan. Yeah, we skipped that. Yeah, we skipped that. Reagan and Clinton in that order. Um you gotta give Reagan the number one slot. He just took it to a whole nother level. You're saying who was worse, Reagan? Yeah, who, who was worse on the war, the drug war? Reagan, 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 Reagan Clinton. Or Nixon? Which administration do you all think was the worst in terms in terms on the war on drugs and expanding the prison population? Reagan, Clinton, or Nixon? I don't know that I could pick one to be honest with you. That's I, you know I, you got me trying to pick between three devils. I mean, you can't say Nixon because I mean, he wasn't president long enough to do nothing. See, and see my oh, answer. Well, what no, I said well, was, Nixon, said, Nixon was making sure that the draft continued to disproportionately pull out of the black community. Nixon was also the one who got the the ball rolling on the hypercriminalization on of uh, a new round of hypercriminalization. Right, so he he's bad. And then you got Reagan. Well, he took it to basically another level. He was, yeah, he was a he was a pretty bad thing, but he focused more on economics and would use economics to hide his to mask his racism. And then you got Clinton. I'm not a big fan of Clinton, but I I do try to look at it and and not leap. To always going like what a lot of people did, ninety four crime bill, and is because he was on the tail end of something that was already moving. <laughs> so you know, and that's why I said, you know, yeah, I got to You got me trying to pick between three devils, and I just yeah. can't do it. You know, and, and I'm not saying like 
devils like Elijah Muhammad call all white people devils. No, I'm saying that a pe a person or a thing is known by its characteristics and behaviors. So if I look at your characteristics and behaviors and they are devilish, then you are a devil. That's individualized. Those three people are very devilish. So it's hard for me. So I can't pick one. one. You can't pick one. Yeah. See, the only reason I can I say, fortunately, we had uh, an intermission, even though he became the so sad. Jimmy Carter was the intermission. <laughs> it was not his he fault a, that Reagan was out here selling weapons for a hostage. decent person. He was a decent him. person. <laughs> what happened? I'm laughing at what you just said, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> he was right, but he was like an intermission, he right? Was. Like all this horrible <laughs> stuff. Then we did got you, a good break. Then we said, "No, nah, we do that." <laughs> right, and then Jimmy, Jimmy has the he's silly enough to be like, "I'm just going to be honest with you." No, Jimmy, don't don't be honest. No, nope, don't be, I'm gonna be honest. honest. We need honest president. No, but as soon as he was honest, he became the worst. President, president in modern history for being honest. <laughs> Honesty is not like, a bad thing. It's just people can't it handle is. the truth. I agree, but I'm saying the consequence for him being honest is not the same as the consequence fault. of these other people playing the game. Reagan you was selling doing weapons that for hostages. That was not his fault. That was Bush. But Reagan was using it to get in office, but it was Bush. That's how I was all time the way it was. And who was Reagan's vice president again? Exactly. <laughs> That's where we get so, our contra from. Because what was Reagan. what was what was Daddy Bush's job before he was the vice president? CIA, CIA director. director. CIA, baby. So it just so happens and that CIA activity different strokes. I can't believe that. That whole just say <laughs> no. Don't start me. What? But then that's why I say with Clinton, out of the three, I give him less of a hard time because, yes, his ink is on that crime bill. But I remember being a young person in 88 to 94. I mean, Bloods, Crips, Vice Lords, GDs. I mean, drive bys. Every, it was horrible. Horrible. It was bad, right? So it was. It was <clears throat> you go. That's to not to go excuse to sleep, it. You go to sleep every night listening to gunshots, right? And that's not to excuse it, but it's kind of like like small. We use little small ones that are more current, right? Yeah, uh, here in Atlanta, when that police officer murdered that that man in the Wendy's parking lot because he fell asleep, and when they woke him up, he was disoriented, so they killed him, yeah, right? He just and woke then, him up. But they killed him. Then the the city falls apart. There's you know protests, all of that. They the the wind that Wendy's era area became a no go zone for police. Like don't come up in here because we gon we gonna do something to you. Don't come up in here. And for all of maybe a week, it was peaceful. It was almost being hailed by these progressives and and young people as like. See, look, we don't need the police. We don't need the police. But what came in right behind them? The drug dealers and the violent people. <laughs> so if you don't want the police in your business, don't do the stuff that brings them to you. Right now, we got the situation where they're, they're carjacking all over the place. Right? It's in isolated pockets. But you're giving your enemy what they need to now crack down on you and treat everybody like a criminal. And that's similar to what was happening in the crime bill era. You, it was not the, the vast majority of good people. Um, it was the people who were just intent on exploiting a situation and doing bad things. I got no love for parasites. If you 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 feeding off of your own community and causing them harm, you need to go. They need to lock your little ass up. Yeah. 